Encore, coming up in today's show. We catch up with American alt rock band The Pixies as the group embark on a world tour 30 years after they first got together. France 24 meets the Iranian actress who's made an impression on French filmmakers. We sit down with Golshifte Farahani as she moves into English language cinema. And filmmaker and photographer Larry Clark pitches up in Paris with an exceptional sale of behind the scenes photos. Indie rock legends The Pixies have returned with their first full-length album in 25 years. Head Carrier contains tributes to the band's longtime bassist Kim Deal, who's now left the group. Despite time away from the studio and the change in lineup, the band haven't changed much since their work in the late 80s and early 90s, which made them a household name. Mark Thompson has more. A new start, but an old familiar sound. Three decades after the band first met, the Pixies released their sixth record. They say new album Head Carrier is proof that they still have more to offer. I think the fire is still there and the trademark is still there. I mean, we, we would still have any music thrown at us and we'll, it'll manage to sound like us. It's just part of our yeah. fingerprint. <laughs> Pixie's sound has been cited as a major influence by the likes of Radiohead and U2, but there's one song in particular that wouldn't have been possible without them. Nirvana frontman Kurt Cobain said his band's signature song, Smells Like Teen Spirit, was actually his attempt at writing a Pixie's track. So do the band themselves hear it? Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's a great song. Uh, the dynamics and the simple ting ting, the, 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 the guitar. And, but it has to be pointed out to me. There have been fallouts along the way. The original quartet broke up in the early 90s, with the band admitting they found it difficult to be in the same room. Founding bassist Kim Deal rejoins the group in 2004 for the Pixies reunion tour, but she has now been replaced permanently by her longtime stand in Paz Lenchantin. A change the group says is best for all concerned. Just her presence alone, not even in the studio, just her being with us does it. And I gotta say also, it's interesting because she's such a good bass player that she makes me play better because I don't wanna be embarrassed. So I've stepped up my game, and also, even though she's been with us three years, she's still the new woman, so we're still behaving very well around her. So, <laughs> still, and so it, it makes everything really nice. The new lineup means that heading into the studio is no longer a chore. While taking the album on the road also presents an opportunity to showcase their older material to a new generation of fans. Where is my She's one of Iran's most controversial exports. Golshifte Farahani started acting at the age of 14, and since then she starred in dozens of films set in her homeland and abroad. She was banned from Iran after exposing too much flesh on screen in 2008's Body of Lies. Now Farahani resides in Paris and she's looking to new horizons, starring alongside Adam Driver in Jim Jarmusch's new release, Patterson. France 24's Louise Dupont went along to meet the rising star. Look me in the eye. <laughs> you are a great poet. Hello, thank you for being with us, Golshifte. In the film, you play Laura, the girlfriend of Patterson, Adam Driver's character, and spend your time making cupcakes and learning to play the guitar. How did Jim Jarmusch present the film to you? Jim told me that he wanted to tell a real love story. He told me that the respect and admiration that these two people have for each other was very important to him. 
C'est vrai que c'est un film vraiment sur It's a film about the good things in life, taking joy in the simple pleasures. Is that also your philosophy in life? Oui, c'est ce que je, je, je suis au courant. Yes, I know that's what life is about. That the extraordinary can come from the ordinary. When we can turn banality into poetry, that's real life. Artists are sometimes very sheltered and don't realize that this exists. We're lost in a world of money, celebrity, society life and all of that. We aren't curious like Patterson is. He doesn't think of himself as a true poet, although he is. Laura is also an artist. She is funny and brilliant. Working on a poem for you. A love poem? Yeah, I guess if it's for you, it's a love poem. It's kind of inspired by our uh, Ohio blue tip matches. Really? Does it mention the little megaphone shape the letters make? Yeah, actually it does. How beautiful. You were 14 when you shot your first film, The Pear Tree in Iran. I think you've shot 19 films in your country. Do you miss Iranian cinema today? I think I don't have an objective perspective on that. I feel a lot of pain in exile, and I don't think about it or I try not to think about it. It's more Iran that I miss, the villages, the fruits, but Iranian cinema, no. Maybe that's not the goal. Also because I've made films in six languages other than my maternal language, Farsi. We know that Iranian cinema is extraordinary. We all know that it's great, but I don't have the privilege to work there. You seem to find it easy to pass from auteur cinema like that of Jim Jarmusch to big productions. We will soon see you in Pirates of the Caribbean 5. Do you enjoy making big films like this one? That's what I've always wanted to do, play different parts from different worlds, different languages and different nationalities. Of course, it's very fun to be in a Disney film. It's extraordinary, the mechanical boats that move and six hours of makeup. But at the creative level, and in terms of meeting people, I know what type of cinema I belong to. I don't fantasize about Hollywood blockbuster cinema. Success for me is not getting into that kind of cinema. I enjoy Cassavetes, Jim Jarmusch, Woody Allen. I prefer them. In 2008, you filmed Body of Lies with Ridley Scott. You also filmed with Leonardo DiCaprio, now with Johnny Depp. What are they like to act with? In Pirates of the Caribbean, I worked more with Javier Bardem. That's not bad either. <laughs> And Jeffrey Rush, a brilliant Australian actor. Find Sparrow for me. And relay a message from Capitan Salazar. C'est toujours génial. Bon, it was great. De jouer avec Leo pour moi. Bon, j'étais. I was 23 years old when I acted alongside Leo, and that experience touched me. It's funny. I was acting in Iran, where we have a normal life. Everyone hugs each other off camera, but in front of the camera, no one touches. Mais lui m'a montré ça. For me, it was like a phobia. Then he showed me how I could be tender on camera. He also helped me with the problems that I had after. To the film. Ridley Scott, too. Body of Lies created a turning point in your career, in your life. You have already said that it gave you a lot of problems with Iranian authorities. In hindsight, would you still choose to do the film? Of course, a hundred times, two hundred times, a thousand times. Because I'm free, I'm an individual. I live my life as I wish to, as an individual. And that can create problems in the society where the individual doesn't have a place, like in Iran, because it's a danger for those in power. I could be realizing my dream to be a country singer. Nashville, here I come. Next, we've been checking out an art sale with a difference. 
These photographic prints aren't going under the hammer at an auction house, but are simply displayed on piles on a table for potential buyers to rummage through. Larry Clarks, the filmmaker and photographer behind this informal and improvised event here in Paris, he's selling examples of his candid, often explicit photography for 100 euros a print. The images include behind-the-scenes shots from his films, Clark's known for 1995's Kids, starring Chloe Sevigny and Rosario Dawson, Bully with Brad Renfro and Michael Pitt, and the recent French release of The Smell of Us. We spoke to some of those who arrived early at the Rue Antoine Gallery to pick up a print. It's his movie Kids that had the strongest impact on me with his usual themes skateboarders, their relationships, and how we entered their intimacy, sex, and all that. There aren't only women in his photos. There are also men. So I'm not really shocked anymore. I mean, you can still be shocked, but nudity is everywhere today, in paintings, in photographs, and so on. I'm not shocked. And finally, we'll leave you with a new show rolling into town here in Paris. The Semyoniki family are a ramshackle Russian collective who bring new meaning to the phrase clowning around. Their burlesque spectacle is a wordless celebration of off-the-wall humour and they're playing at the Seagal till the end of the year. Remember, you can get more arts and culture on our website. We're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. <laughs> Hey!